can start by you introducing yourself. So your full name and what you do. My name is Karen Anderson and I'm a sales rep uh, for the West Coast. And how long have you been in the business? Oh my gosh. Okay, so business, um, probably since 1976. Cool. So you do the math. Okay. <laughs> and then, um, let's see, my showroom I've had for 25 years. How did you get into sales and fashion? Um, I think because I've, well, I was always in retail going through college and I really liked the interaction with the customer and I felt like, um, you know, that was a good spot for me to be, but I have to say I have to give first credit to um, some of my mentors because they're the ones that really um, helped me get into the sales positions that I've been in. So I started in New York. Um, in 1979 nice. and got my experience there which was incredible Definitely. and uh, then moved here in 1991 worked for a uh, fashion designer Nancy Heller and then um, moved over to really um, found a partner and got into the wholesale business learned the repping the multi-line rep business and um, you know that kind of started my you know, my time as a multi-line showroom. That's amazing. And what I've noticed is pretty consistent with a lot of people in fashion is that they always started in retail. Is that, do you find the same when you're talking to people in the field? They've either started as a designer or in retail sale, like it's just the stepping stone. Yeah, it is a great stepping stone. I mean, I do interview a lot of girls who, um, you know, they go to FITM or FIT and they get their start there and maybe on the part-time they'll do a little bit of retail um, but yeah anytime you can um, you know have that uh, experience with customer service you know and then step into sales here I mean I for me I always look uh, to hire someone that's had that type of experience but so yes it's an amazing stepping stone and yeah I do find um, a lot of people with that background. Yeah. So interesting. I do. Yeah. I love hearing it. I'm like, oh yeah, there's another one in retail, or there's another one that was a designer. It's kind of cool. It's like um, the boot camp for what you're about to deal with. You know. Right. 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 I think you know, um, people think that okay, I'm going to be in sales, and that that's all you're going to do. Right. And you know, you know, when I lived in New York, that's kind of we did focus just on sales. Really? Um, yeah. So I mean, less of the administration. You were really just out on the front lines. Oh yeah. No kidding. Yeah, so part of, you know, our world is changing because, you know, now we have um, a lot of different facets to our job between, you know, getting the credit card, being the credit mm -hmm. manager, calling them for, you know, oh, excuse me, you know, right. collections, <laughs> excuse me, but, you know, yeah. um, or, uh, you know, obviously traveling to, to do the sale, organizational skills, mm -hmm. whether it's, you know, doing our bookkeeping, all of that, you know, we oversee PR now, yeah. major sending out e-blasts, getting on constant contact, whatever it is, having a website yeah. so that you have all of that um, detail for your buyers. Definitely. Um, so yeah, it's all encompassing, but it's exciting and um, yeah, I mean, you know, I still love it. It must so. be a lot of fun to do what you do and kind of meet the new people in different places that you travel or talk to designers and figure out what inspires them because then when you're selling the product, you're now their voice. You're a part of what created that thing to begin with or at least telling the story. Um, as a rep, when you're deciding whether or not to pick up a line, does that stuff matter to you? Where things are made, the story behind the product, the relationship you have with the person. I know you already said that that was a priority, um, the people connection. But what else do you look for when you're looking at a brand new designer and you're trying to decide whether or not they fit in your showroom? Oh, that's a good question. Yes, first of all, I look at the product as, can I sell it to my accounts? What? Is it sellable um, to who I represent or who I work with? Um, and then I look for, I really try to focus on being casual because that's our lifestyle on the West Coast. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of my niche is um, casual, but with quality, yeah. with the right price. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Have you noticed in the last even five to 10 years that buyers are asking questions that they hadn't asked before? And if they are, what are those questions? Well, I mean, 
um, as you brought up, one of the questions is where is it made? Really? That's come up. In, oh, okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Starting about 10 years ago or more recently? Has more that come recently. Up? I think, cool. you know, it wasn't really, you know, affecting them as much as it does now. And okay. so, um, yeah, so, you know, I do, I, I do look for that okay. and I've been fortunate to have, um, Wow, I have an international showroom right I was now. Say, yeah. yeah. Things yeah. made from everywhere. And yeah. I love that. Yeah. It makes it eclectic too. Yeah. Is there any recent press or recent events that the showroom's been a part of that you'd like to share with us? Oh, thanks for bringing that up. Yeah. Yes. Uh, we just recently had Vivica Fox come in and tape part of her show. Cool. Um, she's doing a show for Lifetime. Cool. And one of my designers is um, using her as the face for their brand. Oh, neat. So it, that was a very exciting event Definitely. for just really kind of an afternoon. And um, yeah, so that was great for the showroom. Great. And um, we hope to have more of that in the Definitely. future. Where can everyone find you? Website, social media, all that stuff? Yeah, just... yeah. I'm at Karen at KLAShowroom.com is my email. And then the showroom is KLAShowroom.com. Um, and I guess that's it. That's it. Cool. <laughs> Thank you so much, Karen. You're welcome. You're welcome. Thank you.